Greetings, my name is Sean Duckett and I was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I remember from a young age that I uh, was not raised in a Christian home, but there were some strong Christian roots in my grandparents. And uh, that's where a lot of that came from, going to church with my grandmother. But I did not, uh, I did not grow up wanting to really uh, be involved with church. I didn't think we could. We grew up pretty, uh, in a pretty uh, po impoverished uh, circumstances. And so, you know, some of the things that you learn from the streets, you know, you kind of justify a lot of your actions. And uh, as long as you believe in God, then you can pretty much justify anything. You'll believe, oh, well, God sees my heart. And uh, that's why he understands me stealing or lying or cheating or just doing whatever it took. And so having that, those street smarts, I kind of grew up with that mindset that it was more or less uh, verbal judo when it came to conversation with people. It was, you know, try to stay one step ahead of the next person. You don't want to get stuck. You don't want to get caught. You don't want to get, you know, back into a corner. You don't want to be manipulated. So it was uh, kind of a get them before they get you. And so that mindset, you know, comes with the, you know, that, that environment. I remember there was no one married in our family. And so, you know, uh, shacking up, uh, living together was the norm. Having children uh, did not understand the illegitimacy thing, illegitimacy thing. So just having kids. And I remember uh, uh, having a son on the way and that really stirred my, you know, stirred me. I got to do something with my life. And, uh, my brother, he had already joined the army and I, 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 I went behind him and joined the army with him under the buddy system and we went our separate ways. And I remember for me to actually make a name for myself became an, became an obsession, make, make my own name, make my own identity. So I joined the Marine Corps and I got over all the way over in Okinawa. And as soon as I touched down, when we checked into my unit, a guy came out, we had a mutual friend in common because he, he knew some guys from Philly and he was from Norristown, which is outside of Philadelphia. And we had a mutual friend and he ended up the conversation inviting me out to church. I did not go. Uh, again, at the barracks, when I was in my barracks, I was finding some other guys that were from Philly and we were trying to meet up with them guys. And there was another guy witnessing to a guy that was from another part that was not too far from Philadelphia. And he was witnessing to him and he turned it on me and he told me about Christ. And so I said, okay, that sounds good. I got religious with him, like, uh, you know, trying to be religious and talking like everybody else. And I remember uh, not going again, but then we finally were down in the blue, uh, the red light district, as you would call it, in Japan, where things that, you know, Marines, young Marines do, the drinks and all this, the bars, the strip clubs and all that. And I remember going up and seeing a crowd of people. And at, to my surprise, they were surrounded. It wasn't a fight, but it was actually a person street preaching. And I remember him singling me out and began to witness to me. And I remember talking to him and I finally went out to church. And when I finally went out to church, I see all three of these guys, they all went to the same church, the Potter's House Christian Fellowship in Okinawa, Japan. And I was so surprised, but I was also arrested. I was arrested because it was like, man, three different guys from, you know, three different occasions, all at the same church. I believe God is calling me. So it became more and more clear and obvious that I need to be here. And so I remember humbling myself, bowing my knee, didn't feel anything immediate, but it only took a week and I was right back down that same street, that blue, that red light district, but things were different. I did not enjoy the things that I was seeing. I wasn't comfortable being there. And to my surprise, there was a flyer that said, Jesus loves me. And I just was blown away. I was like, no wonder things are different. I'm different. And I began to pursue Christ and love God. And I remember the first, um, going to church and, and not really knowing what my purpose in life was. I was always wanting to know that. Again, I was obsessed with making my own identity. And they said, you can preach the gospel. And I remember saying yes. And so I began to serve God. I got uh, PCS to, uh, to Jacksonville, North Carolina, where I met my lovely wife, Arsene. We got married in uh, 1990. And we have four kids and uh, four grandkids uh, to this day. We're great, greatly blessed by that. Pastoring in Raleigh, North Carolina, our North Carolina state capital, where God is moving. It's only been a little over a year, but we're seeing some tremendous things. God is really helping us, blessing us, speaking to us, 
using us and there's a church, there's a core of people there that love God and we're going to see some great things. Amen. And we're going to really believe God and you need to believe God too. I'm inviting you not just to church, but I'm inviting you to destiny. I'm inviting you to see what God has for your life and just join us. We're all pursuing the same uh, uh, destiny to be like Christ, to be conformed to Christ, to please God. And there's a place for you. And so we want to invite you to the Potter's House Christian Fellowship 2821 Raleigh, North Carolina. And we really love to have you come join us for our services and just know that Jesus Christ loves you and he died to prove that to you and that you can make a difference. And if you want to have an identity, don't look for anything in this world. Look to Christ and he will give you that life and life more abundantly. We hope to see you real soon. Come and worship with us.